second dimension is objectives. So what's the objective of your uh, current analytics program? Maybe it's not defined, which is, uh, it doesn't happen very often anymore. Uh, but I see a lot of organizations working with a task list. And then, you know, what happened with the task list? There's more coming in all the time, and you, don't, you never have enough resources, enough time. And then the task get shoveled, you know, oh, this one is more important, and, and I see a P0 all the time, priority zero. It's more important than priority one, <laughs> so you make room. Maybe it's uh, e-marketing optimization, so that's good. Maybe what you're trying to do with Web Analytics is optimize your marketing campaigns. No problem with that. So the, the, the thing with the model is not to reach level five. We'll see that the thing with the model is to work within the limits and the constraints and, and, and work on what we can control, what we can influence and, and improve. Maybe it's e-business optimization. So when you look at a web, if you look at a website, it's not only about marketing. There's sales, there's HR, customer support, and so on. So e-business is about optimizing all of those elements. Maybe it's the, the whole business that you're trying to improve. That's getting tougher. Expedia, obviously, is an online business, so you know, it, it's e somewhat easier. But in traditional businesses, it's pretty hard to move from online optimization to business optimization. Or reinventing the business. We're reinventing the business, we see that in startups, because they always adjust based on the environment and the data they can find. Or we often see it also when you know, a company files for bankruptcy. They don't have any choice of looking at data and reinventing the business. The best thing is when the business is getting larger and they adapt faster to the environment. The third one is the scope. The scope is about the size of the playing field. Would you prefer to do that or this? One is more expensive than the other. One is in the backyard. The other one, you need to go somewhere. So, it's the size of the playing, the playing field maybe you, you are improvising. So you come to a conference and you hear about, eh, this year it's not too bad, but I've seen conference where everybody talks about social media and how important it is to have a Facebook presence and have a social media strategy so get, they get back to the office and that's the trend of the day. But next week it's gonna be something else. Maybe it's the hippo game, highest paid person opinion. So the boss decides what is the priority. Maybe you're trying to optimize a specific activity on the website. Maybe you, the, the only control you have is optimizing the home page. Or maybe it's up simpler. Maybe it, the only thing you can do is doing campaigns and optimizing landing page. But you don't have control over the checkout process because it's not in your department. It's not in your control. Maybe you are optimizing a single, I shouldn't say a single website, but I, I should say a single channel. So you do a good job on the web, but you don't look at social media or you don't look at call center. There's a strong relationship and correlation between what happened on the website and what happened in a call center. If you just work with your website and you don't look at the rest of the business, you're losing part of the equation. So what's interesting is looking at the whole ecosystem of the business. Look at the other data. So now we're starting to move from web analytics and drop the web. Just talk about analytics. Now we're going into the realm of Tom Davenport's uh, business analytics. That's much more interesting. And beyond online, you want to optimize the offline also. So eventually, as web analysts, my dream or my hope is that we will drop the web part and we will simply be analysts. Give us the data, give us a challenge and a business context, and we will analyze what is available and come up with recommendation for the business. We don't care if it's the online part or the offline part. What we care about is improve me, improving the success of the organization. The fourth one is the team and the expertise. So as I said, it's already hard to find good people. 
it's harder to retain them. So what is the structure of your team? Maybe you don't have any dedicated resources. Usually it's uh, not too bad in that respect. Uh, maybe it's a project team. Again, the problem with a project is once the project is over, everybody goes back to their own business. Full-time analysts, distributed team. So when I do, uh, I'm, do I'm doing a workshop on Thursday, and one of the, the aspects is what are the skill sets of the people doing web analytics? Who's in, in, who would be considering themselves as being more marketing-oriented, more IT? Usually we see you know, always this, the power struggle or the struggle between IT and marketing. I have an IT background, but I've managed to go on the business side. Uh, it's similar everywhere. So what's interesting is to have a team where you get very diversified skill sets that complement each other. That gets more interesting. And then eventually you can reach a stage where you are empowering your business users so that they can self-serve, but you still have your expert team to tackle much more complex issues. The fifth one is the continuous improvement process and the methodology that you're using. So uh, again, uh, Tom Davenport was talking about being agile. Well, if you don't have a methodology, that's pretty hard. And when I talk about a methodology, methodology maybe you have defined your own way of doing it, or uh, as a team, you have your way of doing analytics. The problem is every time someone leaves or you hire someone new, you have to train them based on your way of doing it. What's more interesting is using a proven methodology. Anyone knows about Six Sigma? Anyone knows about Lean or Kaizen or any of those agile development methodologies? Use them. It's as simple as that. The, the, what I like to do is use Lean Six Sigma, which is a simpler version of Six Sigma. It's a data-driven methodology. And the interesting thing is when you hire someone, you can say in the job description, you can say knowledge of Six Sigma is a plus. And you can train them. Maybe you're, you are agile online, but the issue is if you, if you go at that speed online, but the rest of the business is really, really slow, to react, then you, you are constrained in your ability to optimize. So eventually, you want to have an agile organization. Um, an example of that is one of my clients was uh, an insurance company. And they wanted to have a, a, a very easy three-step process to give a quote, except that the back-end system had been developed over the last 30 years on mainframes in COBOL in a 12, not so easy step process. There is absolutely no way you're gonna get to a three step process online. They struggled for 18 months trying to convince themselves they could do it. At the end of that, they looked for an outsourced solution where you specify your business rules. It took them three months to get there. They lost. 18 months trying to do it themselves. Not very agile. The sixth one, again, it's not about the tools. It's how you use them. So what's your level of sophistication? Sophistication of in your using uh, the way you use those tools. So maybe you don't have any tool which is um, fairly rare right now. But maybe I, I still see a lot of organizations that are just doing clickstream analysis, just using Google, for example, nothing else. And they have not defined business outcomes, goals, KPIs. They have not even defined their dashboard. Maybe they simply use you know, the default reporting. They don't do segmentation. They don't do merchandising optimization, A-B testing. I still see a lot of organizations that are not doing A-B testing because they don't have the capacity to do it. Personas. Anybody use personas? The, the way I put it is personas are segments with a name and a face. 
Simple. Start there. But it's a lot easier to go around in a business and, and, and always keep in, mind, keep in mind what would Bob do on the website. And you know who Bob is. He, has, he shares attributes of segments. Multiplicity, uh, I guess everyone knows about how Avi Nash presents mul multiplicity. Basically, in a scientific approach, you never use a single tool to look at something. You will look at the temperature and the color. You will look at different attributes using different methodology or different tools to define and describe what's going on. So never use a single tool to do your analysis. Linking and merging the data, multi multivariate testing, uh, behavioral targeting, life it, defining lifetime value, that's getting harder already. Because uh, most web analytics tool will, some of them will struggle to give you just visitor information or good quality visitor information. But when you start to uh, try to evaluate customer value over a longer period of, period of time, that's getting more serious. And then predictive analytics and activity-based costing is the next phase. And again, beyond when you reach level four and five, you are starting to go in the realm of business analytics and Tom Davenport's uh, concepts. So what I see most often is, <laughs> I was expecting the screen to be there. What I see most often is um, something like this, where it's totally unbalanced. You know, low, low buy-in from management, but unrealistic expectations in, ter in terms of the scope and the objectives. You don't have enough resources. You don't even have a process in place to do analytics. You will fail. So you need to first realize what's the current state and then decide what is the desired state. So you need to fix the issues. So what, what's the issue there? Well, if you try to bring all the other dimensions to level uh, three or four, no way. It won't work. So you need to... to um, maybe take a step back and lower the expectation in terms of objectives and scope, in that case, while you improve the quality or the uh, process that you have in place so that you can gain experience and learn and then maintain the balance. So two quick examples, a media company. There's two ways you can use the model. One is in 2006, they did an assessment, and that, that's how it showed up. Very, very low maturity. Three years later, that's how the, we, we redid the assessment, and that was the picture. The major driver was a VP of marketing that came into the business. That guy already knew about the importance of web analytics and being data-driven. He made things happen. That was the major shift. And then it, it, it allowed the organization to grow in terms of web analytics. The issue is the, job, the, the guy did such a great job that he got a promotion and he moved away. And now they are kind of falling back a bit because they lost their champion. The other one is a car manufacturer where they had responsibility of doing analytics for 50 localized sites, but each of those localized sites were being managed by local agencies. And they were trying to provide analytics for all of them. Didn't work. So in that case, the maturity model was used to tell the managers, here's the picture on the left. That's what we are doing right now. It doesn't work. If you want us to be very efficient, here's what we need to improve. We need more resources. We need training. And we need better tools. But also, we need some stronger buy-in buy -in from managers throughout the organization. Because otherwise, we're always stuck in our little corner trying to make things happen. And it doesn't work. So you can go online and do a self-assessment. And so far, nearly 200 organizations have filled out the, the, the assessment. And from, from different countries, different verticals, um, different size. So it's very interesting. So I, I'm getting closer to be able to really uh, document 
by vertical and by organization types and so on, uh, what is the overall maturity of other organizations. So, so the, the interesting thing is there are a number of agencies that are using elements of the model with their clients. So that's good. So the, the goal is use it as is, modify it, do something with it, but the goal is really to uh, think about it. Do an assessment. Look at where you are right now. So if you want to know more, I'm doing a workshop on Thursday. Uh, I can do audits, and I work with agencies sometimes also to go with the agency at their client site. So they keep the relationship. I, I don't want to get more clients or anything. It's, uh, uh, I do it with the agency. Um, I'm teaching the course at Laval University. It's, for, it, it's, it's part of an MBA program. Um, and beyond level five, or if you reach level four and, and five, look at Tom Davenport's uh, book. Those are great. If you're not there yet, then you know where to start and do the assessment and see where you stand. And uh, of course, you can reach me if you want to get more information about, about that. And different ways of reaching me. Basically, search for my name or Imuria, and you'll find me. Any questions? Thank you. Good stuff.